Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Game Informer Show, a weekly video game podcast releasing every Thursday. I am your host, Alex Stadnick, and, and as always, I am honored to be joined by Alex Van Aken, who will be here eventually, I promise. He's just running a little late. He's got to do, you know, Alex things. We get busy sometimes. It is what it is. So join us each episode alongside a rotating crew of GI editors and special guests from around the industry as we bring you the latest news, reviews, and big man swag your eyes and ears can handle. We got a lot. I was just saying off air. For there being no games out right now, mm-hmm. after the the glut that we just got, we got a lot to talk about, folks. We are looking at uh, we got preview impressions of Cult of the Lamb and Two Point Campus. We got uh, review impressions of MLB and Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga. It's a lot. We're going to dive into it. But first, let's introduce the panel. K-Star, Kim Wallace. Woo! Woo! Hey, I'm wearing a star necklace today to like... Uh you know, fully embrace my name. Yeah, I like that. Uh, what's the shirt today? Is it Kirby? No, yeah. it is Akihabara <laughs> Bright Lights, it says. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. It's, a, you know, my Japan love. Yeah, for sure. For audio listeners, it's one of the dopest shirts you can ever imagine. So much so you should go over to YouTube and watch it. That's all I'm saying. So. <laughs> and then, of course, the West Hound. Ha- the West Hound? Woo! It's going to be one of those shows, folks. <laughs> the News Hound, <laughs> West LeBlanc. Hello. Hello, hello. I kind of like West Hound. The West Hound? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you had to chase your hound around before we, we started this uh, Yeah, this I show. did. You can see yeah. the top of my hair is still a little wet because I chased my dog around for 25 minutes in the rain after she got out at the new place I just moved to. Um, yeah. Good just morning. Give good, you a good morning. She's yeah, like, yeah. Right. My, my first workout like, in like five help. years. I went pretty. Yeah, she's like, let well. me help. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, uh, thank you both for joining me, listeners. Thank you for listening. Uh, we got a good show today. Like I said, we talked about those games, but we're gonna start today off with a little news from the man himself, himself, Wes LeBlanc. I don't know how you keep coming up with these news stories, Wes, but they just keep you keep making them. I don't know what's going I just, on. I log on and then people are like, here you go. Write, yeah. write some news. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and that, friends, is that uh, Unreal Engine 5 is finally releasing publicly. Um, we have been hearing about um, Epic's uh, crazy new engine, right? Uh, we've seen it, uh, tech demos of it in action. But... Uh, now is the first time, if I'm not mistaken, it's finally getting like released. It's like 1.0 type of thing, right? Um, so this is the entry from Wes himself. It says, Epic Games has officially released Unreal Engine 5, the game development engine uh, it first unveiled in 2020. This is the same engine used for last year's surprise Matrix demo, the Matrix Awakens and Unreal Engine 5 experience. Now it's out and available for anyone and everyone to download and use. Uh, plus, to get people started with their Unreal 5 engine journey, both in a development and those who want to mess with it more casually. Uh, I almost had peanut butter toast burp up there. I apologize. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, Epic Games has released uh, Lyra. Do you pronounce that? Yeah. Lyra? L-Y-R-A. A playable shooter demo. You can, of course, simply play it. Um, it looks like Splitgate mixed with Fortnite shooting mechanics. Oh, interesting. Okay. Um, but makes the demo unique. Uh, what makes the demo unique is it can be completely customized on the dev side. Uh, this gives users the chance to tinker with lighting, platform locations, and more. Cool. So um, I take it then, and I, th- I, I don't know how much y'all know engines and stuff like that, but it sounds like Unreal 5 is, is available for free for people to use, right? Is that my understanding? To an extent, I think, yeah, like okay. it's a open, I don't know if open source is the right word. That's just a word I hear a lot. But like, <laughs> yeah, if you want to check it out and tinker with it and make a door or some stairs or something, you For can. Sure. I imagine the deeper you go into it, the more Epic Games gets involved as far as like, you know, mixing engines. I know the Witcher team is going to mix some of their old engine with the new one um, right. to kind of get their Witcher mm-hmm. 4 game on the run. But um, yeah, it's you can download it and become a game dev. Yeah. I'm actually making my Elden Ring right now as we speak. Wow, what's it called? Yeah. Um, I don't have a name yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wanted to see what you would come up with there. All so, I could come up with uh, is Elden Ring, and I was like, well, can't name yeah. it that. <laughs> so I think for for the casual fan, right, the announcement of a of an engine, right, isn't all that you like mind blowing, right? But I, I, Unreal Five feels a little different in its capabilities and as Wes pointed out in his article we've seen it in action with the matrix demo 
right? And I don't know if y'all played that at all. If you didn't, you really should. It is a uh, surreal experience um, with the moment-to-moment action. I don't know, Kim, have you tried that at all? No, I haven't, no? unfortunately. Okay. Yeah, it is, you know, a very basic gameplay on rails shooting a little bit, but then you get to walk around and in this huge city that they built in this engine and best lighting I've ever seen, right? Like crazy, you know, um, particles, physics, like the whole thing is 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 breathtaking. Um, and to me, this news is exciting because it means we know that devs have been working with the, yep. the engine, right? But now it's like it's even it feels like it's ushering in something new even more so, right? And and because, um, you know, we knew uh, Hellblade is on this, right? Hellblade 2. Um, we saw that demo last year, and that looks mind-meltingly good. Yeah. Um, the Coalition released a uh, de- uh, tech demo, right? That was just absolutely gorgeous, right? Um, so to me, this is exciting because... Some of these ser- series and games I know are getting closer that we haven't seen in a while, um, but also they're going to look stunning. Like mm-hmm. seeing the Coalition's demo, I was like, Gear 6, when? Give it to me now. <laughs> like I am so ready. Um, I don't know. Did you guys have any other reactions to this, Kim, Wes? I think it looks really, really good. And I am always excited um, for, you know, technological advancements with games and games are getting so much more realistic that it's just it's amazing just to kind of see the evolution. And I know for people, they're saying, well, the you know, the graphic jumps aren't going to be as heavy and big for us as they were, say, you know, from like PS1 to PS2 anymore. But I still think if if you look at the little details and the way that they're able to like make things so much more realistic, that's what's exciting for me because I'm all about immersion and, you know, getting a game as close as you can um, to looking like the real world or whatever, you know, your world want you want to make your world be. But um everything I've seen like makes me excited for the games that are being worked on with it. For sure. Wes, how about you? Um, I kind of feel the same way I feel at the start of a new gen when you like play a game and you're like, holy crap, this looks amazing. This is just the start. Like what we're seeing Mm -hmm. now is year one or zero of Unreal Engine 5. Um, And like to think about where it's going to be in six, seven years, I don't even know. Like, where do we even... Yeah. The Matrix demo, like you mentioned, is so dang impressive. It's like, it just looks like life. And like, what happens in six years when developers get to tinker and, you know, figure out new shortcuts and ways to use this engine to the fullest extent? Yeah. And man, I can't wait. Like, I'm excited for the next six years, but I kind of want to just fast forward to to that and see, what, see what's going on. Get rid yeah. of the growing pains. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Um... So Xbox also had a release, and I'm I'm uh, paraphrasing from Ryan McCaffrey's tweets. Uh, so I don't know if it's I, he's usually pretty accurate, but over at IGN, but he says Unreal Engine's ex- official release means we are one step closer to the following Xbox exclusives. So we know about Hellblade Two, um, we presumed Gear Six, right? Um, but then he has uh, Outer Worlds Two, Avowed, Everwild, State of the K Three, In Exiles, two new RPGs, and Double Fine's next game. So that's a lot of exciting stuff. And I feel like for the most part, Sony has been part paired with Unreal, right? They, I feel like that they've they've been kind of hand in hand with that too. But it's like Xbox is like, no, 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 no. <laughs> Our future is a lot on Unreal Engine 5. We know The Witcher is coming there. We also found out that the next Tomb Raider from Crystal Dynamics is also going to be in Unreal Engine 5. Um, and I think a lot of people... At least on the timeline, right? I'm in. I'm definitely in a bubble. But I think a lot of people on the timeline brought this. Uh, we're we're excited about this. We're relieved that you know Crystal Dynamics was going to go back to Tomb Raider instead of working on Avengers stuff, which it sounds like <laughs> Avengers is uh, nearing Rest the end of its run. Not going yeah. so well. Let's <laughs> not, put it that way. Not as much uh, uh, Earth's, yeah. Earth's Mightiest Heroes anymore, at least in in game form. But um, here's the here's the new story from uh, Wes as well. This is a new Tomb Raider game has been announced, uh, but the title's not been revealed. Crystal Dynamics revealed uh, uh, revealed during today's State of Unreal 2022, 2022 that has begun development on the next Tomb Raider game, and it will be developed entirely in Unreal Engine 5. Um, 
So this sounds pretty early, right? We have we know almost yeah. nothing, but I do know, uh, K Star, you are a fan of the Crystal Dynamics Tomb Raider games. Um, first off, are you were you excited, surprised at all that that this announcement was coming? Did you think they'd go back to to Lara and her stories, or were you anxious feeling, about that? I had a feeling they would. Um, and the question is, where do they pick off, mm. pick back up? Because mm-hmm. they said very much that the beginning was kind of the trilogy of her origins and if you got to the last game which i still you're gonna have to bleep me alex get ready i'm just gonna put it it's just that crazy (laughs) um but um (laughs) just like didn't meet all the expectations and kind of had a weird turn for a series that was trying to portray a more realistic uh bent to the experience of her turning into the tomb raider so now we're kind of there mm-hmm. and so it's like i'm interested to see exactly where they'd go next do they just kind of pick up where they left off do they you know skip some time a lot of people are like do they just do another reboot and so i'm like i really hope they don't do that um for me i felt like the games were really fun to play i still don't think they know how to make uh lara croft all that interesting in my opinion mm-hmm. i think they struggle with that i think i liked having a little bit, seen a mo- little more vulnerability to the character. Um, but the stories never, like, hit it out of the park for me because she's never had interesting people around her either to play off of, and I think that really hindered it. So I think they have they keep emphasizing when they talk about the new Tomb Raider. Like, they don't give you much information, but they're like, we're taking storytelling to a new level, and this engine's going to help us. And I'm, I want to know what they mean by that right. and how that goes. But speaking of, like, you know, moving to a new engine, what does this open up for, like, climbing and some of the action sequences? Like, I think about maybe the areas they can create, and I get instantly excited about that. Right, yeah. So that's kind of like... They didn't give us much information to go off of. I mean, Tomb Raider is always going to be iconic. And I think it's a series that I like seeing stick around and constantly being brought back um, for new generations, too. Because I think uh, Ms. Croft is like, she's an important character. And I wish they could just kind of develop her a little more. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see what they end up doing. But count me in the camp that's like excited but also a little hesitant as someone who didn't like that third tomb raider game as much as the previous two right and i don't i don't think you're alone with that um i do think some people want to see maybe the little bit more mythical side right yes. instead of the, the brooding darkness and wes i think you're in that camp correct yeah so i grew up like with tomb raider like my touchstone to tomb raider i don't even know if they're good anymore or if they were ever good but like the, the movies the angelina jolie yeah. movies yo shout out to the movies oh yeah. my god yeah i haven't watched them since i was a kid but i really liked them as a kid and like i just tomb raider's always been zanier like you know games fighting dinosaurs that kind of stuff and i liked the reboot i played the first two i didn't play the third just because reviews and you know time and all that um, and I liked what they were doing. Like, it, it is interesting, you know, a more grittier reboot, which is, I feel like every everybody was doing around that time in yep. games. Um, and then I was like, okay, this is fine. This is, this is good. And then it, I was like hoping that maybe this series would progress to be the Tomb Raider we know because they kept saying this is like, well, this is her origin story. We're going to get there. And that's kind of what I'm hoping this new one is, is like... Mm-hmm. I don't want to reboot. Like, if that would be, yeah. I do do not think that would be a good idea. They've developed this character. You know, you've kind of laid the stones for it. Let's see where this goes. And hopefully we can get to, like, you know, Tomb Raider that we've known for decades. So that third game was getting to, like, the mystical stuff. But mm-hmm. it just wasn't doing it in a great way and presenting it well. Um, and it just was, like, all these jumps and, like, the tone was just off from, like, you can't do this like realistic gritty bent and then all of a sudden just jump out of nowhere to this crazy um you know it just the end of that game is really puzzling to me so um i think they were trying to get there and just so i would like to see them try to do that again and make it you know just connect it better within the story and character because that stuff is fun too it's like Mm -hmm. it is part of the experience Right. It kind of yeah. made her. In, if, I haven't played the last one, so correct mm-hmm. me if I'm wrong. But I've, I've read a lot that like she's kind of like a 
pretty bad person in the last one or yeah has the like last a, one just, especially dark turn there's tone issues all over the place and just like stuff that doesn't like make sense and you're kind of yeah. just like why why they do this um right. like i said the game i found the game like there were it was fun for to play but when you look at the story and if when you're following it you felt a little like cheated like what the heck is going on here so that's why i had alex bleep me out because that is the <laughs> only way that i can explain that third game to people <laughs> and like uh, in a bad way because sometimes that that can go on in a good way when things get a little crazier a little unexpected but it wasn't to me um a strength of that game at all it hindered it big time yeah i'm curious i'm curious with this new one if they do anything about the ludo narrative dissonance that something yes. like this or um uh uncharted suffers from right because like we love nathan drake right we love lara murderers serial bad. murderers <laughs> yeah. bad people they're killing bad people the right most vicious way is right. <laughs> yeah so it's like do you focus more because i think one of the the great parts and what it what sticks out in my memory of maybe like something like Tomb Raider Legends, um, more so than than anything else, um, is the ex like the exploration and the dungeon crawling, right? Mm -hmm. And especially if you pair that with the gorgeous visuals of Unreal, like maybe you can get more mystical, focus more on the exploration and the, the tomb raiding, right? And and maybe like fix that tone that way. I don't know. I don't know what the future. I loved that first that 2013 game, the first one or whatever got halfway through the second one didn't play the third one similar to like west so i'm looking forward to them giving me a reason to jump back in and you know the fact that this is going to be in one of the most advanced engines we've ever seen yep. has me very excited for that so and i'm excited like for all the games that we talked about today like you know the future is very bright and um and to your point kim earlier like you know oh graphical leap whatever it's not going to be the same it's like that's true but like look at something like what naughty dog does with the uncharted or last of us yep. where it's like obviously that game is gorgeous i'm not saying it's not but like the animations in that are so fluid and so lifelike that's where immersion's coming from today yep. lighting and that kind of stuff and and more realistic um you know character actions and stuff like that so it's like i feel like we've we've set the table right where we're kind of we we know what great graphics look like. It's like what can people do with animation and particle effects and that kind of stuff that really pushes the medium forward. And uh, I'm excited to see what people do. Like Wes said, this is like week one, right? Let's see yeah. where we're at in six years. If the planet still exists in six years, who knows? Um, we are going to take a quick break because we got to get in some new people. Let's do it. Let's do it. Welcome back to the GI show. Uh, Alex Van Aken. Hello. I, I wish you talked a little bit more in the last segment. Yeah, I was just like quietly sitting here. Why? You know what happened? I forgot to turn my camera on, and you guys forgot I was here. Right. But I oh, heard yeah. everything yeah. and everything you said about me, <laughs> and I will remember that. Yeah, we said, man, Alex looks as good as the Tomb Raider, if not better. You know. And I will remember that. Thank yeah. you. That is a true friend. Will say that. <laughs> yes, exactly. Uh, also, this is like week three in a row or four in a row, Reiner, that you're on. Andrew Reiner, hello. Yeah, I'm like Cal Ripken. Hello, hello. <laughs> Going for the record. Yeah, you're just, you're never injured, I guess, right? Yeah, the, I mean, it's number of games played. Yeah, mm, okay. he has the record for that. So I'm at three and, uh, you know, I'm going to keep going up till like 3,000. There we go. Episode 3,000 of the GI show. We're all in uh, walkers in a retirement home. Um, <laughs> talking about the good old days. But uh, let's live in the good days right now. So we have a lot of games to talk about today because, uh, you know, the world go moves on after the Elden Rings and Dying Lights of the World. And there's some really great stuff we get to talk about, including today's topic of the show, Lego Star Wars, the Skywalker Saga, which, Reiner, you busted your butt to review for us. Uh, the review yeah. went up on Monday and turns out pretty good Vigi game. What do you think, Reiner? I liked it a lot. Yeah, it's, you know, I've played every Lego game to date. You know, they used to pump out like three a year. Now we get, you know, this one took, what, four or five years to to come to market. Right. So I was I was hungry for it. The second I picked it up, it felt like an old glove. You know, it's it plays just like you'd expect, even though it's more sophisticated with the combat and the the run and gun play. It's, it's still a Lego mind. game at heart. You're, yeah. you're smashing bricks. You're collecting mini kits. You're looking for secrets. You're unlocking just dozens upon dozens of characters, almost 400 characters. Jeez. And you're playing through all nine of the Skywalker films. 
Not not Rogue One, even though I consider that it has a Skywalker in it. It does have a Skywalker in it. it. Yeah. They did not include that. They do have a nod to it, but that's about it. Mm -hmm. So it's a good game. Yeah, through and through, it's exactly what you would expect. Um, There's there's some parts that could use some polish or, you know, I think the sheer scale of the game hurts it in that there are these open worlds that they designed. There's not a lot to do in those. And Mm -hmm. I, I would call them hub worlds. They're not gargantuan but they're big enough where you get bored walking around them Mm -hmm. yeah there's definitely i feel like there's something to do around every corner but it is similar it's very and in reminder this is a kid's game right you know this is for children uh, e10 families and stuff yeah but it's like there are similar puzzles and that kind of stuff but they do differentiate it nicely with like you know uh there's the free play free play is back right and it's like well you can't do this if you're not r2d2 or general grievous or, or something like that so right um did you find yourself going back to free play uh, a decent amount when you were playing yeah to unlock certain characters uh you buy clues so it's not a needle in the haystack where you have all these planets you're traveling to and i just want babu frick right like that guy is hilarious i want that guy how do i get him you buy his clue it tells you exactly what you need to do where you need to be so you can go get him a lot of times that means going into a mission for free play with certain characters to to unlock him yeah and speaking of humor and babu frick i forgot how funny the lego games are like genuinely wholesomely funny i was playing um i I was playing through episode one right and they do a spartacus gag and i was like why this no kid is gonna understand this but for the adults (laughs) playing they're gonna love this and there's just some really smart silly things that they throw in here the physical comedy is always there but it was like oh that's such a deep reference that like i didn't think a kid would understand but it was great nonetheless so yeah and sight gags jokes puns like better call mall and i'm like i'm giggling (laughs) through this i'm I'm giggling through this whole thing like it's it's done really well and you know they've done these you know the classic trilogy over and over and over tt games has the developer but they still find new ways to spin these iconic moments in fun ways and you just don't know what you're going to get from him. Kylo right. Ren, by the way, is the best part of this whole game. Whenever really? he's on screen, he's it's the jokes are just they just load him up like his shirt falls off. And all of a sudden, you know, he's he's shirtless and his chest is far bigger than it used to be. Uh, <laughs> or if he's wearing, a, you know, his shirt falls off and he's wearing like a I love Darth Vader T-shirt. You get to see his bedroom like it's hilarious what they do with him. Yeah. Uh, and still no online co-op. But you, again, couch co-op and it works really well. Yeah, that is that is a, a tough knock against that because this is, I really do want to play this with some of my friends who I grew up watching the Star Wars movies with, right? Um, yeah. So that's a bummer. I don't know. I don't know if they have any plans to bring that. Do you know, Reiner? They, they, they took a sense? firm stance on online. They don't want, you know, creeps playing with kids and all that stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Yet Minecraft and Roblox have been going for a long time online right. and yeah. uh, they just stuck to it. It's just like you you, you got to have people you know who you're going to play with. And I guess, you know, I respect that. The way you describe it, Reiner, like there's TT games, like they've done this, this content so many times, like this story. It almost sounds like improv in the way that you're going to go to a show and yeah. you know they're going to make jokes about this certain thing, but you don't quite know what it's going to look like this time around. Um, yeah, it's like last like time we had that. a banana here. What should we do this time? You know, like, yeah. Uh, and all the all the big moments are done really well. There's vehicle play again. You know, you're unlocking. Not only are you unlocking like 388 characters or something like that. That there's also vehicles, over 100 vehicles that you unlock. Jeez. And they they have Tie Fighters everywhere. You know, like um, Star Killer Base are everywhere. The Return of the Jedi. I guess you don't play through the Return of the Jedi moment, but you just the the sequences you see. It's just chaos. Yeah, uh, lots lots of fun things like that. Yeah, I the some of the set piece moments are great. Some of the other because I just did the the Darth Maul fight. Spoilers: they fight Darth Maul in this one, but um, <laughs> it 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 nicely translates that from film to to Lego, right? But there are some moments that I do feel like. Uh, Needed a little bit more time and exposition, right? But I mean, it is what it is. Lego. I can, if I want that much exposition, I can go watch the actual movies and stuff. Yeah. Um, there's also on top of the countless characters and vehicles that you you go around unlocking kyber crystals, right? Yeah. Um, and those unlock upgrades. Did you find the upgrade system was memorable or helpful, or was it just kind of there to collect things? 
So it basically replaces the red bricks that you used to collect, you know, the super secrets that allow like magnetic, you know, all the studs to get pulled to you magnetically. That's all in this this upgrade system. You can then add on like if you don't like that R2D2 Astromech mini game where you have to hack a terminal, you can upgrade R2D2 and then just have that spend two thousand dollars and just automatically have that puzzle solved for you. Um, so there are things there that can speed up play, uh, make you more powerful again, speeding up play where your guns are doing more damage. So yeah, I think I think there's something to it. It's not like a, an RPG where it's dramatically changing how you play the game. There's a couple new moves you might unlock, but it's it's nice little bonuses or bumps that that help you speed up play. For sure. Cool. I uh, do you have because uh, like you said, we've we've done the song and dance many a time. But did you have a favorite trilogy recreation? Did you what, playing through this? I liked playing through the new trilogy with Ray and Finn just because we haven't had those last two games as Lego games or last two movies as Lego games yet. Mm -hmm. Uh, So seeing what they did with that was fun. I also think they kind of cleaned up the narrative (laughs) a little bit, uh, added a little bit more context to certain things. uh, Interesting. Okay. Make it seem like it makes a little bit more sense with, you know, (laughs) Ray's reveal and all that stuff. Uh, So I, I appreciated that, but the classic trilogy is so good, you know, going to Hoth, riding around on a Tauntaun. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, all of them are good. Yeah, it's it's just a fun ride. Oh, cool. Eat your heart out, J.J. Abrams. Um, cool. Well, I, I know I'm excited to play more. Um, I, I I started with one because that's what I grew up with. I grew up with the the prequel trilogy. So um, and those games were very I, I played it with my friends and my my parents and stuff like that. So I'm I'm happy this is a good version. Would you say, Reiner, this is the best version of Lego games that we've had so far? Or do you have another favorite? I think it's the best of all of it together. I guess it's the only one, but they have done classic stuff within the prequel games before. The best Lego game, in my opinion, is still Lego Star Wars 3, The Clone Wars. Okay. I thought that was just really cool. They had that RTS element to it. But this one, I mean, you get, there's so much here just to unlock. That's, there's, there's just a joy to that. You know, that's the best part of the game is finishing it up and then going and getting the characters you want. The last Marvel game I got really into was in 2015 with Marvel's uh, Lego Avengers. Oh, uh, or the, the last Lego game I should say I was into. Um, have they like brought that formula further? I mean, I really enjoyed it. So if it's just more of that, it's uh, more of I'm that. Good. OK, you cool. know, hey, there's a certain character that can blow up metal surfaces. You know, it's yeah. it's the exact same song and dance. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Well, uh, if you're curious about learning more about Lego Star Wars the Skywalker Saga, head over to GameInformer.com. Reiner has his full written review um, on top of the podcast as well. Reiner and I did a little review discussion over on YouTube.com slash GameInformer where you can check out um, some of the opening moments from the first three trilogies. Nothing super spoilery, even though it's weird talking about spoilers in a, a series that everyone knows and somewhat loves. I don't know. Star Wars love is up and down these days. but uh, So definitely go check that out. But Reiner, it sounds like that's not the only game you've been playing this week that the people want to hear about yeah i've i've been double dipping uh cheating on lego star wars with a little <gasps> mlb oh. uh, mlb the show 2022 and uh it's very good and i'll keep this short because I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people don't want to hear about baseball here <laughs> but it is a the product of iteration of decades of iteration right and they just keep making this formula better and better adding new animations smoothing out the play They've added two new modes, and this is what I'll hone in on here very quickly. Cooperative play, which allows you to play with one or two friends online for 2v2 or 3v3 against other players. So it's more of a competitive mode. And it's great because it it alternates at bat. So it'll be like, let's say you and I are playing, Alex, uh, and I'll be at the plate and you'll be cheering me on like, Hey, he's this guy has a tendency to throw high heat, you know, O2, like look for that. You know, like you're giving each other strategies and then you alternate pitching. So one inning I'll pitch, you'll be fielding. Mm-hmm. The next inning you pitch and I'll be fielding. Turns out yeah. one of my friends is like Wild Thing from the Indians from the major league movies. Yeah. Cannot pitch to save his life, but he <laughs> has to. You know, so yeah. I'm just like trying to like coach him through it, like Hey, try this, try that. But it's it's really fun. It, yeah. it, and it's there's it's really intense too. I was surprised like how like a competitive element like this with friends. It almost has like like 
Call of Duty or uh, Overwatch like as aspect where you're like really kind of rallying together as a team, even though you might just be watching, you know, you're and, just kind of verbally talking. And forgive me, did you say this is just an online mode or can you do a franchise? Yeah, no, this is okay. this is just online, uh, okay. just competitive. And then the other thing they added is mini seasons to Diamond Dynasty, which are three inning games. So like Conquest, you have these very short games that you play through. You can get through a season in a matter of days. I think it's like 20 games plus the playoffs. And then they have great rewards tied to that, which is unlocking packs of cards and, and diamond ranked characters or players for your uh, your Diamond Dynasty roster. Okay. Um, so solid game. I'm still reviewing it now. But again, just a product of iteration and it's uh, they keep making their games better. They have not really had a, a, a significant dip here in, in a while. Yeah, they are one of the the pillars of great sports gameplay, I feel like for sure. Um, and I'll say this real quick. Uh, mm -hmm. PS5 and Xbox One. Awesome. Looks great. Plays great. The Switch. I played that for a couple hours significant frame rate loss mm. a lot of graphical flickering that is very distracting like you'll see a fence yeah. you know it's like a thin yellow line and it'll just almost start racing you know like the way it moves like just seeing it as streaks moving across the screen um and the characters with the pitcher when it pitches almost looks digitized in handheld <laughs> mode on it switch oled okay. so uh not quite up the the hardware is not quite uh capable of handling this game but it's That's there it is you know, batting and pitching does work fairly well, but you just got to know, like, there's going to be a lot of visual uh, things that are happening and then also just some lag every once in a while. Okay. And that's not, um, can you do any cross save, any cross platform? Oh, cool. Yeah, all okay. of it. Yeah, cool. all of it's there. So it's funny. My friends play the game on Xbox. I'm reviewing it on PS5, but then when I play at night, I'm playing on Xbox and it just carries my save over like like it was on the That's originally awesome. created on that system yeah well especially it's on game pass too right so you really if if you're obsessed with mlb right you yeah. can do and if you're traveling and stuff like that you can get the game pass version and then just buy the switch version you already like you're paying for one basically and take that on is the go gonna, that's cool do we know is it going to be on one of sony's new services it i hope it is i can't imagine they wouldn't right yeah, that's so strange yeah they wouldn't Mm hmm. That, that feels would be, like a, uh, that would be a slap in the face a little bit. Like, right. I almost said it would feel like a slam dunk, but that's the wrong sport. <laughs> it feel like a uh, a walk on a ball, you know? Yeah, that's or, pretty, uh, that's... a strikeout, maybe. There, OK, yeah, we're getting better. I like this. Yeah. Oh, I know sports. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, OK, cool. So, Reiner, no score yet from you. Though, not right? yet still working on it a lot of game there to, to go through i got to mm -hmm. test out franchise more road to the show yeah they just keep adding on kim they need to make one of these years someone's going to figure out everything take all these modes and put them into one gigantic mode where we mm -hmm. could just test one mode and get everything yeah. uh that's the dream because right now you just go in here and you're like there's 50 things to do yep like I, I can I don't totally know what I'm gonna do. <laughs> relate, Reiner. Every time I get a sports game to review, it's just like this is gonna take a while because there's just so many modes and trying to dissect each one in the way that we need to. It just takes time. Yeah. And the one thing I'll say, if you're buying it now and you want to start it now, I would wait until the season begins, until every team has one game in, because uh, the rosters won't be updated. There's certain oh. there's a rule with the MLBPA or MLB where a player has to first play five innings, I believe, hmm. before they can have their jerseys sold or uh, be added into games. So for me, Suzuki, that. yeah, Suzuki is on the Cubs. He's not in the game yet. Once he plays his first game, if he gets through five innings, they can, they can patch him in, you know, okay. have him in that live roster. So if you're going to start a franchise mode or whatever, make sure you have like the most current rosters. Okay. And that'll probably happen. I'm, I'm guessing that update hits on Friday or Saturday. Okay, cool. So look forward to that. Reiner, how many wins for the Cubs this year? Uh, 83. 83, okay. No if, if Kyle Hendricks is on, otherwise uh, I'm putting them below 500. Okay, so no playoffs this year, you think? No, I think they're second or third, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, I'm going to go prepare for the Twins uh, championship parade this year with C4 <laughs> and the rest of the squad. That's amazing um, with 60 yeah. wins, how they could do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If Correa, all right, no, we're not going to do this now. Yeah. Uh, Buxton for MVP. Uh, Reiner, thank you for joining us. I think you need to jump off though, right? I do, yeah. All right. Good to see well, you all. Yeah, it's good to see you. The EIC, everyone, thank you. And uh, we'll be right back.
should ask the viewers. You should ask the listeners if they're ready. Listeners, are you ready? Are you ready for more games? Because that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about spoilers. We got to do it, you know? Uh, welcome back. Today's a wild one. If you can't <laughs> tell, we're, we're bringing people in, out. There's so much to talk about, so much to discuss. Uh, a lot of fun stuff. Alex and Kim. You got to go to a little preview event for uh, Two Point Campus, the same team behind, is it Two Point Studios? Is that the, the, yeah. the dev's name? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Same team behind Two Point Hospital, which some people w- might remember. Uh, they're taking things in a little bit of a different direction, Kim. What's, what's going on at the, at the, uh, the campus? I don't say completely different direction. It still okay. is very much in the vein of Two Point um, Hospital, but they've definitely expanded upon um, what they're doing, which is now you're creating uh, campuses and you're able like there's just so many more items that you're allowed to have at the beginning, which really opens up a lot for for creation and you can decide to build buildings yourself or have them like automatically um constructed which is new and then on top of that like there's a relationship system in the game now um so and it has all the humor that they brought from hospital um into this even wackier i would say um just some of the courses that you offer like there's a whole campus um you know, that's dedicated to like knighthood and courses and being a training people for be a knight. So stuff like that, a culinary, you know, campus, which is like very much in the decorated with a lot of pizza (laughs) and stuff like that around it. Uh, There's a lot of cool things and you pick the courses and you can also like, because of the relationship system, you want to make sure that your students you're not only honoring their requests, like sometimes they'll ask for an extra cubby in the library, but also that they have places to socialize and fall in love. You can make students Ooh. fall, and that's important to their happiness, right? The, students wanna... falling in love with other students, right? Not professors. Right, right, okay. right, right. Yeah. Yeah. So you can throw like mixers to bring them together and stuff. So there's just a lot more to do that they added on. And you can even kick students out if they're like a problem. Um, <laughs> you know, if they're just causing, bringing all, the whole like curve down and causing ruckus around campus. There's like, like, I said, I was impressed because it feels like a step up from what they did in Two Point Hospital, um, just with more options. And like I said, uh, I, I really like the social interactions that you can see. Uh, it's just really cute and funny. Uh, for sure. So, yeah, it was, it was positive impressions for me. How did you feel, uh, AVA? Yeah, uh, I played about two, three hours um, like Kim did. I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I was already looking forward to it, and it's quickly become like one of my more anticipated games of the year. What I really like about two, the two, I guess the two point games now, not just two point hospital, is like there was always this like back in the '90s and early 2000s, tycoon games. Like I feel like you could just pull a string of letters from a random word generator, put tycoon afterwards, and it's probably a game that was made. Um, and they're always like very whimsical business schemes, you know, restaurants, roller coasters, uh, aquariums, whatever. And I always liked that about them because they were like more of an innocent, uh, portrayal of like capitalism, I guess, <laughs> even though there was certainly dark undertones to them. Like, uh, even though it's not a, a tycoon game, but I feel like it borrows from a similar design philosophy, but like the Sims, you know, trapping people in the pool. Roller coaster or, tycoon. Yup. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh could, man. You could send people flying off the tracks. Bro, who among us didn't go to their local library, boot up roller coaster tycoon, and just cause absolute chaos on those things? I yeah, know right? I did. Yeah. I know that. Like, the I, recurring seen... nightmare I have falling off a roller coaster like that. Yeah. I hate me it. designing your 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 doomsday yeah, machine. Right, right, yeah. yeah. Like you could jack up the prices. Uh, you could like cut pay, or if you timed it right, you could hire a slew of janitors. I saw this on Reddit. And then if you fire them before the following week starts, you get free labor and you don't have to pay them. Like there is like oh, some no. dark undertones, but so behind like this like bubblegum aesthetic. And I feel like as Tycoon Games kind of progressed, that subtle darkness became very like apparent. And like the forefront, like I feel like we lost the subtlety of it. 
and we had games like Prison Architect and Big Pharma, which are like games about like just privatized prison and like you're like hiring snipers to watch out for like yeah. the prisoners. Like, uh, yeah, like these are very popular tycoon games, which are probably fun to some extent, but like they have changed the fantasy and they mm -hmm. got they kind of embrace the darkness. And I just like am not comfortable with those games. Uh, and what I like about Two Point Campus is there is no subtlety in those games either. It's all absurd over the top. But I feel like the world that they have made, because they Two Point Hospital and Two Point Campus both take place in Two Point County, which is like the fictional world. And I feel like even though you are doing two two things that are very hot button issues, healthcare and education, I feel like they accomplish it and make it lighthearted and fun mm -hmm. without punching down and without like the darkness, you know, the dark cat, like you're still, the end goal is to make money and expand, but I feel like it's not at the cost of the people that are in the game operating, <laughs> you that you're like doing all this stuff to like you are, the goal is to help them. And by helping them, you also get profit. Right. And I feel like the company and the people in these games, can both flourish. Mm -hmm. And I like that about these games a lot. And I like that about Two Point Campus. Like they really, the angle that they really push, like you can be to a certain extent, I'm sure you can be evil, but the way they present it to you is like, hey, your students need to improve their grades. How about you install this really fun thing so that like they can wind down uh, in between classes and like maybe that'll help their grades out. And so that is like, I like that lens through which we are these tycoon business people like it's not it's exaggerated like i said it's lighthearted, and i feel like those like in the wrong hands could very easily like turn into like dystopian capitalistic games about like just like <laughs> squeezing the money out of people. you're you're like, saying you can't have 18 year olds sign fifty thousand dollar parent plus loans in this game i mean maybe you can. i've only played two yeah. hours okay yeah um but it feels more utopian than any other tycoon game. It's like, yeah, we can make money. Yeah, we can do all these wonky things, but you know, we're taking care of people. And I like that about these games. And mm -hmm. it's kind of like the biggest takeaway is like you are, you're making profit with a conscience, I feel like in these games. <laughs> and the animations are so much fun. Like half the fun is just like all of the animations that they've, uh, pulled from and are and I make because you see like all these unexpected things happen. It's like, okay, well, I need to make a virtual reality lab for my school, um, for my new course. And so you've got all of these, like you've got these giant VR chambers and like, it looks like all of you, it's like, like out of a Pixar movie, like, um, like the weird contraptions that like Kim was talking about the culinary arts school earlier. There's one, uh, one of the, the, assets that you place down in that area is this giant um almost like a think of like a charcoal charcoal grill but without the legs on the ground but it's like giant like the size of like 20 people wow uh and inside it's like a giant hamburger and there's like pipes coming out of the contraption and steam shooting up yeah. and all of the students have like their they're like at these computer stations like making these giant hamburgers and it's just really funny to see like all the animations and it's very much like a slower paced game and that like a lot of your time is spent observing and like seeing what happens from your actions and like making little tweaks here and there. Yeah. Waiting for requests to come in because yeah, students it's, it's, will email you. Mm -hmm. It's really enjoyable. And they nail the humor. Like <laughs> it's very dry. It's very British humor, but like one of the characters is very, uh, very much like a vampire in disguise. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he likes um, there. I think he, he's part of the drama club or something. I don't know. But he wants like vampire posters hung up in the room. Yeah. To, like subtly and make him feel more at home. And like uh, his traits are like it's just all exaggerated and stupid and really funny. Um, and I'm very excited for the full product to come out in August. It has cool. been pushed back. It's been delayed. Um, from May to August, but yeah, um, yeah. can't well, wait. 
No one wants to come out in in May. I uh, I don't know if it's I don't know. I don't the know shine of. I think it's my birthday overshadowing things, right? But you know, uh, I won't yeah. hold against them. So. It is my half birthday. Everybody's going to be celebrating May. Alex's birthday. With Everyone, the whole games. Yeah. whole world. Everyone. Are, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My half gonna, birthday is May twenty fifth, so I fully expect. Gifts. It's a day after my birthday. Wait, no. Wait, no. <laughs> gifts for your half birthday? Yeah, it's a big day. Okay. Yeah. 30 and a half. <laughs> what if I don't make it to my next birthday? This is the oh, oh, last no, time you'll no. be able to officially celebrate me. <laughs> is that a threat? Are you saying if I don't yeah, give you a gift? Yeah, this is getting creepy. Yeah. I legally cannot confirm or deny. <laughs> We're joking, that, FCC. We're joking. Some of that British humor going on here, right? Yeah, yeah right. All oh, right, mate. I'm yeah. so freaking oh, funny. I, I almost just said a cuss word. <laughs> you might want to write that time stamp down. I didn't mean to. I got you, mate. Thanks. Thanks. Oh, you're a funny man. Um, okay, cool. So do we have a, a firm date in August or is it just a uh, placeholder? It's August. I wrote the news story, so I should know this, but I think it's <laughs> August 9th. But okay. let me double check that to cool. confirm. And I'm assuming y'all played on PC? Yes. yes. Okay, cool. Any, any tech stuff getting in the way or is it a pretty smooth experience? Very smooth for me. I don't know about you, Kim. I had a very smooth experience as well. Like I was impressed and I, what I want people to take away from it being pushed back was like, I did not get the feeling like this game was being pushed back because it had any pro problems or issues. Honestly think they're just putting extra polish on it and trying to launch. Um, they want to do simultaneously on like all the platforms, I think is just a lot of making sure you get it right. Cause I remember with two point hospital in particular, it did not w run well on switch and mm. Why is Switch always the damn culprit? Every time. It is August CPUs 9th. CPUs from like 2009. What is it? August 9th? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah August 9th. So okay. yeah, it's on PS5, Xbox Series X, S, uh, PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. I believe it's coming to Game Pass as well. Ooh. Don't quote me on that, okay. but okay. I, I remember that. But yeah, I didn't like, I played, I put a lot of time into Two Point Hospital, so I was excited for campus and... I knew Two Point Hospital wasn't like, it was good, but it wasn't like, it was decent, it, but I knew I was, it wasn't anything like, you know, mind blowing. I played campus and I was like, this actually has me really excited and um, looks like they're taking a lot of steps in the right direction. Like even being able to just like hold cooking contests for your students and stuff like that in the culinary school, like there's just a lot of more detail to these worlds. And like before, I know with hospital, like, the only way to really satisfy patients was to move them up on like the patient wait list and and try to like make sure they didn't die <laughs> with like how sick they were. Um, here I feel like you have a lot that you can do to like make students you know enrich their lives and like make them better students as well by giving them more you know resources. And I'm really excited to dive in and see all the different like courses that you can offer and, and what happens. But I I felt really high on it when I went from the demo. And I don't think like this delay, like I said, is anything due to like issues or problems. I think it's mainly just the polish and making sure stuff runs well. Cool. VA, you feel the same? Yep. Cool. All righty. Well, that's exciting. You can go over to GameInformer.com and check out Kim's news story. And video question mark? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, Alex has a video coming uh, that you'll definitely want to check out if you're excited. So, um, cool. Speaking of excited, Wessel Blanc. Yeah. Sitting there, <laughs> dog catcher of the year, chaser, whatever you want to call him. Uh, we got the, the beautiful experience of actually getting to play one of my most anticipated games for the year, um, and that is Cult of the lamb and uh if you don't remember i think it was like almost a year ago it's like maybe like eight months ago yeah. something like that this indie game from devolver digital and massive monster coming it was these happy tree friends-esque animals yeah. sacrificing <laughs> each other um and basically you're forming forming a cult with these adorable um you know uh, christmas critters from south park um and we actually got to play it we got to play the first 20 minutes of the game uh we worked with uh devolver and uh, massive monster to get that the demo and i am very happy to say that i absolutely loved my time with it wes how are you feeling about uh cult of the cult of the Land? yeah it's so good it's like one of my most anticipated this year for sure it feels good it looks great the music's awesome 
Um, I'm glad you mentioned Happy Tree Friends because that's all I could think about while playing it. But I was yeah. like, I don't know if they're even relevant in 2022. But I'm curious you know in what? the comments who who knows what Happy Tree Friends are. Um, yeah. I remember. Yeah, you remember? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got in trouble. My buddy and I, I don't know why, his like his dad had a VHS of Happy Tree Friends and we weren't supposed oh. to watch it. And then we found it and we were watching it, but then his mom came home and yelled at us. It was a whole thing. I remember it very vividly. Um, backing this up though, so that's the concept, but the game is very interesting in itself. It's not just, it's not what I expected, right? It is a roguelike meets... Um, meets animal crossing animal, basically yeah. so um you are basically in the forest you have been sacrificed by this cabal of ancient gods that basically oppress this forest right and you get sacrificed but you come back um due to another deity who's been locked away who needs you to start a cult for them uh in order to gain power it doesn't seem good for anyone but you go with it anyways so but you go through these different forest areas right um we only got to play the first one because we only got to play 20 minutes um and it's if if y'all played uh, people are gonna roll their eyes but if y'all played it like inscription right how you go through the different um paths right or darkest dungeon i think does something similar too right where it's like very, you beat an area, you get through it, you collect what you need to collect, move through it, and then you have an option, right? You can go get more resources, you can go get more fo followers, and etc. You're also looking, for, like I said, for followers because you're building your cult. So once you get through a certain section, right? You beat a boss, you, you get through. You come back to this area and you start off with you have to recruit them you can customize your uh recruits right and then they you can choose uh in our demo you could either choose they can farm um rocks and trees while you're gone to you know to make campfire and, and that kind of stuff um and there's some really interesting sim stuff going on there Wes, did you what did you think about the combo of both yeah so I don't, I don't know if maybe I missed in trailers or something, but I had no idea there was the whole Animal Crossing aspect of this. I thought it was going to be this Me fun. Either. Go through rooms, hack and slash, try to get forward, keep going. Um, and then, yeah, you get to this giant open space and you, you get to start building things and with your followers and whatnot. You can see where you're placing. You know, it's very simple. Place this monument or whatever you want to call it here, and then you do whatever it does. Um, and yeah, it's it's exciting to see that you're going to be building this giant um, cult headquarters base, a Church of Scientology building. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yep. um, uh, yeah, I'm super stoked because it gives, I mean, roguelikes are fun and it's fun hacking and slashing through rooms, but having something at the end of every run to kind of like reward yourself with is super exciting. And um, finding recruits along the way makes it even more fun. For sure. Well, and I was anxious too, and right, we only played the we only played the demo, right? But I was anxious to see because I feel like making a roguelike and a settlement game is diff those those are both difficult tasks, but now this game is marrying them. And I was like, oh, okay, we'll see on this. Um but at least from the fighting perspective, which I really enjoyed, um combat is quick, it's uh um fun, it's responsive, the controls feel great. I my first demo, the first time I tried it was I only got access to like the main sword or like the you know, generic sword, right? And you get upgrades as you go through these areas, right? But uh, so I was like, oh, this is fun. But then it started to kind of unravel in the uh, or show me some of the more weapons and some of the abilities because you get more conventional melee weapons, but you also get spells, abilities, that kind of stuff. I, don't, I can't remember what they're called in this game, but like. I was launching fireballs, right? There was something that looked like the Halo Energy Sword that yeah. I was all in on. I was like, let's go. Um, so the combat feels great. The enemies uh, were pretty varied in the the opening that we played. Um, and I think it helps that this world is is, is like uh, grotesquely beautiful, right? The mm -hmm. the style is, is what attracted to me at, at first. Um, but it in action it's it's as great too it's like it's i don't even i really don't even know how to de describe it it's kind uh, of like diorama like like yeah. there you're definitely in a forest but then in the forest there's like wooden cutouts of houses and things like that it's it's a super interesting art style like I, there's not really many examples i could you know compare it to um but yeah. it looks great and there's kind of 
um, something I'm excited about because the forest area, which is what we played in the demo, looks awesome. But to get into like the run, you go to this area that kind of reminds me of the beginning of Nightmare Before Christmas, where you've got like different doors you can go through. And I'm hoping in the full game, you know, the first door we went through is the forest. Maybe we go to a different biome or something completely right. different. Because mm-hmm. um, I would like to see some more, you know, variety in the environment. Um, yeah. But yeah, I'm I'm super stoked. It's and. and Oh, go, go for it. Nope, you got it. I was going to say something I didn't touch on that I meant to was the just actually playing it feels like good in the controller. There's like this small little vibration they do with every step of the character. And I'm not usually too big on, you know, controller vibrations or dual sense or Xbox stuff like that. But for whatever reason, it works so well in this game. You can feel every single step and it really feels like you're controlling this tiny little sheep character thing. And um, <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, and and on that on a similar note too, like you know, I do still we still need to see, you know, how expansive the the weapons list is, right? How what can you actually do with with your cults? I know we've seen it in trailers, right? You really start to form this massive group, and you know, I'm curious to see how simmy it gets and like how attentive you really do need to be because there's like what we saw there was a hunger system, right? So you need to make oh, sure everyone like is fed. Game. Yeah, dude, VA, I'm telling you, man, like you are gonna you're gonna dig this. And the music is so good. I I was I it's funny because we did the stream uh, when it was announced. And I was like, oh, like visually that looks really cool, but I was on stream, so I didn't really like hear it. You just kind of you get in a rhythm and on stream where you're like kind of hearing the things you need to kind of not but then but then i went back and and like watched the trailer and i was like oh like we got some like lo-fi like beats to slay to like it is like (laughs) it's it's very contemporary but like uses vocals in a really interesting like gothic way like very like um, lots of drums percussion yeah um so i like i said this was one of my most anticipated this year and i think the demo has only improved upon or like gotten me even more excited because i want to i just want to dig in even even more and really see the expansive i want to see how expansive the 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 cult building gets i want to see how powerful you can get um as as the character right um and you know (laughs) this this stuff is dark i think my my fiance said she saw me playing and she was like are you playing invader zim the game i was like well (laughs) you're not fully off on that so awesome yeah, I don't know, Kim, Alex, any any hype for for this game? Yeah, Very I was. Much, though. You go yeah, ahead, I was reading Resli- Wesley's preview, um, mm-hmm. and I was like, "This sounds really fun." Like, I had no idea. Um, like, even when you said like the Animal Crossing kind of stuff in it, I'm like, "Oh, you got me. You always got me there." <laughs> right. But uh, yeah, it's yeah, I'm really um, interested in seeing it and trying it out for myself. Yeah. I love I love this era we're in where the roguelike and I'm sure some people who played Rogue Legacy or whatever will bristle at this, but I, I do feel like we're getting to a more interesting era of the roguelikes and the roguelites, right? And I feel like that got kicked off maybe at like Dead Cells, like in Hades and like that kind of stuff, right? Um, but it is it, they've just found it interesting and creative ways to to bring more people to the fold. Yeah. And I I yeah, this is just such a, a wild one. Whereas like two or three years ago, I I didn't really love animal crossing style games or roguelike so the fact that this is hitting now is like it feels like a, a satanic gift to me i probably have to go to church or something like that but uh <laughs> you know, we'll see so what definitely not gonna <laughs> yeah not gonna show my mom this game but uh you know um so yeah uh be sure to check out uh wes are you is the preview just in the magazine that you wrote um it'll probably make its way online but um, okay. right now yeah in the cool. latest issue is it out yet no I don't think so. Wait, yeah, I think coming we're soon. Upcoming coming issue. soon. Yeah, so be sure to check that out. Um, be sure to keep it locked to the YouTube page. I think our NGT should be up um, now, but if not, it's coming soon. Uh, we have a little uh, exclusive with uh, the the good folks at Massive Monster that we're very excited about. So check nice. that out. Whew, that's a lot of games, but we're not done yet. We're not hey, Wes, done. We got this. Wes, can you? See if they'll give me a, a code for the preview. <laughs> yeah, I can probably do that. Thank you. Tell Just, them I'm really excited to play this game. So sly. I can do that. We might actually already have extra codes. <laughs> <laughs> you hear that? Uh, hit up Wes at LeBlanc Wes over on Twitter. He's going to hook you up with a code. It's going to oh, be great. No. <laughs>
What have yeah, you do done? It. Screw yeah. it. Why not? Let's see what happens. <laughs> Mess around and find out. Uh, <laughs> VA, uh, outside of, of shilling for codes here, um, what are you? You have something else you've been playing that you're excited to talk about, correct? Yeah, I've been playing Midnight Ghost Hunt, which is a um, new ASIM multiplayer game where one side is playing as hunters and the other side is playing as these ghosts. And it is ridiculous, it is dumb. Uh, people are familiar with like prop hunt that old mod where yeah um people would run around and you know one team's hiding and possessing objects like being mimics uh and others are hunting that that's this game um and so you can choose i really like a lot of the the customization there's so many different types of um abilities you can use as a ghost i think the first one you get is um invisibility so like if you're hiding you're clicking and hiding in an object and they discover because the the hunters have like gadgets uh like think like phasmophobia like they're checking for ectoplasm they're looking for ghost trails and if they find you and they shoot you like they can kill you and like vacuum you up like ghostbusters style oh okay um and so as the ghost like you are not only are you like possessing objects and you can like reorient them and rotate them to look more natural in the environment or you can just like be running down the hallway as like uh like a kitchen plate and like they'll be blasting at you as you're like it's very stupid um or like uh at one point in time i was i possessed like a box uh, a case of like a stack of books and had run around this library and found an empty shelf and like jumped up in the shelf so i looked like um you know i was a, a book but eventually if you sit still for long enough as a ghost, your ectoplasm builds up and it's easier oh. for them to find you. So you're encouraged to kind of like keep moving. Uh, and so it's like this, this cat and mouse game. But uh, when I was detected, um, you know, the first ability you get as a ghost, you can turn invisible briefly. My favorite one, though, is a doppelganger ability where I copy the appearance of one of the hunters. And so uh, it's so much fun. Like they'll be like they're like right on my tail, like shooting me and I go around the corner hit my ability. I look like a, um, a hunter, like one of the sweepers. And then I'm like frantically like pretending like I'm looking for the ghost. That's incredible. And then yeah. I slip off in, into the, in the, into the shadows. And if they count enough, they're like, wait a second, there's five dudes here. One of these is a ghost. Like, it's just like, uh, so, so many antics and so much fun. One of my favorite, um, devices you get as the hunter is you pull up like this rotoscope, like television thing. And you can like, you can't have your weapon out with it, but like, you can like look and if a ghost has ran away recently, you can like follow their footsteps and like ping it for your, your other teammates to come with their guns. And like, there's just really a lot of like push and pull in terms of like, uh, the tension playing is both sides. And so the whole goal for the cleaners is they have five minutes to kill all the ghosts. And once the strike, once the clock strikes midnight, the ghosts um, essentially level up and can kill the hunters. And now the hunters become the hunted and they have to defend themselves for like a couple a few minutes uh, while the ghosts are like throwing objects at them and using all their abilities to like kill them. So it's a lot of fun. I'm digging it. I think we're going to be streaming it on Thursday, actually, the day Ooh, this goes up. Okay. Um, so head over to the, the, the Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash game informer and you can see this game in action but it's a lot of fun uh just you know, a dumb multiplayer game that uh has been a nice uh palette cleanser uh amidst all these big game releases honestly so right that sounds it sounds like the less scary more fun version of like phasmophobia oh yeah but definitely i am i'm totally with that yeah um, definitely. just just for pc right just for pc for now yeah on okay. steam cool We'll check that yeah. out. Definitely uh, check out our Twitch channel on Thursday because that sounds I know I'm going to tune in because that sounds like a lot of fun. I have not seen this game at all. Yeah. So, so cool. All right. Well, last last game, last game. Um, <laughs> we saved the best for last. The Queen RPGs, K-Star. You got to go back to a, a uh, an RPG classic, I would say. I think the Internet Very is, is beloved. saying as much. Yes. PS1 um, RPG. Yeah, you have been playing uh, the Chrono Cross remaster, the Radical Dreamers, correct? Is that? Yeah, the, that's yeah. the title. Yes. yes. Um, 
and I think there is good news and bad news with it. Kim, do you want to? You want to? This is the the visual yeah. remaster, right? There's nothing. In yeah, I think I think yeah. just to put expectations in check, like think of it as very similar to a lot of other remasters Square has done um, with like Final Fantasy VII. You know, you can turn off enemy encounters. They've you know, the 3D models have been upgraded to HD, refined character illustrations, the background music's higher quality. Um, you know, they have features to make combat easier if you need that. There's an auto battle function. Um, and probably you can change the screen resolution. So, like, a little bit of quality life improvements. That's not going to change the fact you're playing a PS1 game. Um Correct. And so go into it with that in mind. And also we played on the Switch version and had a lot of frame rate issues. I know some of our editors even were like getting nauseous because of them. Um, right. Hey. Updates could help with that, could not. Um, as I said before, the Switch for some reason is really tricky for people to get it to play well. I'll be interested uh, what people say about other platforms. But... The big thing with this is that's new that it includes is uh, Radical Dreamers, which was a text-based visual novel that was um, released in 1996, so three years before um, Chron Chrono Cross. And right. this is like kind of a history lesson for people. So Radical Dreamers was an alternate story from Chrono Trigger, um, that the writer had come up with and it was this group of three thieves which are in Chrono Cross, uh, Surge Kid and McGill and yep. it unfolds in a parallel world and is actually kind of the foundation for what um, Chrono Cross would become because the writer really wanted to see what else he could do with it. And he was very much like, this is the genesis of Cross, um, because he had the desire to kind of redo Radical Dreamers properly when he made it. Um, those stories were still obviously swirling in his head. Mm -hmm. um, and as me as Alex talked about, which you can, um, we'll discuss more death on our NGT that mm -hmm. we have. But you know what? Go like for me going back has been like, yes, I, this game still like its soundtrack still slaps. I still think it's one of the best RPG soundtracks um, around. It's Mitsuda. You got to you got to just love the man. He does great work. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but what was really fun at the time was like you had like 40 party members you could recruit. And depending on what you did, you'd go down certain branching paths. You know, uh, Chrono Cross was very much a world of multiple dimensions huge cast of characters uh it wasn't the sequel people wanted to trigger so it got like a lot of flack when it came out it's a good game if you don't if you look at it from your own lens of like this is not continuing on with that story but it did a lot of interesting things with its battles i mean you were picking between you know weak um regular and strong attacks and trying and you saw your percentage of hitting those and just making the combinations um of those was fun in addition to the element uh elemental properties for the battle system where you could really like jack up how much your elemental power is but it also go to the enemy too if they had that element so it was trying to bat and you could off balance that by going against um that el their element of choice as well. So there's like a lot of a lot of experimentation. You could do a lot of different strategies. And I think but when it comes down to it, I think what people really liked about this was getting to recruit the characters and see the story. And it's a beautiful, beautiful world, very vibrant and um the enemy design is, yes, is fantastic. Exactly. Yeah, from the, the enemy start. I was just saying yeah. that like they still hold up so well. So yes, there's you're not going to forget you're playing a PS1 game. And if you've always been curious, but just know it's just like a standard remaster. There's nothing. And even like Radical Dreamers um, being attached to it is very, it's just a text based adventure. Like it just gives you, it's a more of a history lesson. I feel like it's not anything to like write home about, but mm -hmm. it's something that we never received in North America and it's very nice to get it. So I think, like I said, that I actually ran a poll yesterday on my Twitter because I was just curious. I was like, what's everyone's favorite PS1 RPG? And you know what? This one came up quite a bit. Uh, 
And so there's still a lot of love for it all these years later and a lot of people excited for the remaster. And I think it is. It is a chance to play it again with having, you know, I like that I can change the speed that the character walks because my gosh, in some of those PS1 RPGs, they were slow, like molasses. And so being able to kind of speed through, you know, villages and knowing, all right, I got to do this to get this party member here. And um, just being able to like kind of fast forward word through stuff is, is very very nice for sure i um i love that insight because you are one of the biggest rpg fans i know um i know joe juba has talked this game up a lot mm-hmm. um i think when i hear the term history lesson it gets me excited but also gives me a little bit of i'm a little standoffish right because like like metroid the first metroid right Mm -hmm. good like it's a history lesson because like you learn about who samus was in the first iteration not that great of a game anymore right we've we've super metroid kind of ate its lunch like we know what good uh wrote or um you know castlevania metroidvania games are like now i was surprised how much i actually was enjoying chrono cross um I think it is because that battle system is not what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be very much, you know, 90 square, like, Mm -hmm. you know, traditional battle system. That's not bad, right? But it is a little bit more engaging in that and almost overwhelming at times with some of the the color stuff that I didn't really grasp in my first two hours of playing it. But I was, I, I told Kim and I said this on the NGT, like, I was a little sleepy playing it at first, right? I was like, okay, like, you know, this is this is Destiny Island from Kingdom Hearts. Like, yep. I'm here for it, but like, you know, I've I've seen this, right? And then pretty quickly it it launches into I I, I begrudgingly call it a twist, right? I don't know if you can yeah. have a real twist in the beginning, right? But it, it does something in the story. I'm like, oh, okay. Yep. And then you start to meet more characters and you start to to gain this party and stuff like that. And I'm like, okay, there's there's something here attached to the fact that I agree. Like, I don't know if I can say best soundtrack all time, but like it is the music from hey, the You haven't is... heard the whole thing. True. It is good yeah. all around, dude. Correct. Don't um, fight me here. <laughs> I, w- I wouldn't dream of it. I am ill-equipped at this point. Uh, you are a level 30 whatever, and I am, I'm just starting. So I will crush you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, right off the bat, you know, um, I didn't realize you could change. So are you saying there wasn't a sprint? button in the ps1 game there it's you couldn't fast forward the way you can hear with how you walk okay got um, it. i think there might have been something to move a little faster but it was like going back now and trying like it just seems so slow and mm-hmm. it happens a lot when i go back and you know now we just have so many conveniences but i do like that square is kind of aware of that like yeah, you can just fast forward how fast your character walks and how all the text comes on the screen. And you can also like, I'll pause at certain points because I'll be like, you know what, I really want to investigate this. But um, it just makes it nice. It just makes it so much easier to explore because like I said, going back sometimes to those older games has mm-hmm. those caveats. Yeah, and I and I do, I said it jokingly about Destiny Islands, right? But it is cool to see some of that inspiration in there because there is even like in some of the camera pans and stuff like that it is very reminiscent of like even in some of the multiple the you know multiple dimensions you can see a lot of kingdom hearts in this game not gonna lie a lot of friendship and stuff like that so i am i i honestly thought this would be a game it's like okay i'm gonna download this capture two hours of content and never think about it again but it, it it got its hooks in me You're a little bit more. You're still thinking about it. I still am thinking about it. But I was going to say, I actually think this now, this, I will play this as long as technically I can, right? Mm-hmm. Because like, unfortunately, I got to the, after our gameplay footage, right? I kept playing. I did get to a part where the game started to chug yeah. um, in a really um, uncomfortable uh not i wasn't quite getting nauseous right but a really you were on like switch as well right correct and i was yeah. like sweet this is gonna be perfect to play on the oled right because it's gonna yep. pop those colors are gonna look great but like and it was a, a, a relatively generic enemy encounter that it like yep. started to go at like three frames a second like it looked yep. bad so i'm curious to see hopefully they can help that along i don't know um but if if that's the 
the the entirety of my next couple hours then yeah i'm gonna drop it but like i the the story is is a lot more interesting than than i thought and i'm I'm seeing why people love this game which is cool Mm -hmm. so yeah it's unfortunate with some of the tech issues and i hope like it's not as widespread on other platforms but i would have recommend not getting it on switch if you have another option because Mm -hmm. right now it's just not not performing well (laughs) yeah I feel like that would be a really good Game Pass edition. And Square's played ball a little bit, but mm-hmm. we shall see. So, um, Kim, uh, I don't believe you ha- you've written impressions in the mag, or do you? Did we just do the NGT? We just did the NGT. Cool. So, if you want to learn more about our thoughts on that, go over to YouTube.com/slash Game Informer uh, Chrono Cross Remaster New Gameplay Today. It's very good. Check it out. Oh, I think that's the most games we've. Oh, I'm burping now, too. Oh what does it matter with me? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go, like... You digested yeah. too many games, man. I got, hey, yeah, there man. we go. I got peanut butter toast coming up. Um, I'm going to get some water <laughs> or something and collect myself. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to the GI Show. Uh, we got housekeeping for y'all. Uh, first up... We do podcasts. We read podcast reviews on the show now. Um, If you want to support us and want to help us out, uh, leaving reviews over on Apple Podcasts helps a ton. We've seen a lot of growth because of that, and that's because of you, so we thank you. Um, You don't have to leave just five-star ones, right? You can leave whatever. Be honest, right? Um, feedback, constructive feedback is helpful at any point. Um, like Brandon JL did. Uh, Brandon left a, a beautiful five-star review and says, I love the show. It's one of my favorite weekly listens, and I can't wait for it to post each Thursday. I love the Alex and Alex era, not to take anything away from the prior hosts. One minor piece of constructive feedback would be to tone down the usage of baby as it comes off a bit cringe to me, but that doesn't uh, detract from my five out of five review, baby. Let's go, baby. <laughs> baby. <laughs> baby. Uh, yeah. Baby, baby, baby. <laughs> Do we I, uh, use it a lot? Do I think like, I do? I think is it that I, context? Like, what's up, baby? Or like, or yeah, it's like the get hype moments where it's like, yeah. let's go, baby. Like, yeah, I think that's, I think that's me. I, I, I feel like VA does that a decent amount too. I, don't, I love just that. Get, talking about it, we've done it like ten times in thirty yeah, seconds. Right? <laughs> this person has uh, now changed their review and says yeah. like, one star too much, baby. Um, womp womp. Yeah. So no, we appreciate the review. Um, I uh, I do like the 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 jest at the end there. Um, but yeah, that kind of those kind of reviews. If uh, if you have something similar, let us know. Um, I can't promise I'll stop saying baby, but you know, I at least I think about it now. So you know, one step at a time. Weekly streams. Uh, we have Midnight Ghost Hunt uh, this Thursday, as Alex said earlier. Not sure about replay because Marcus is out this week, so I'd imagine no replay. But we'll probably still stream something anyways on Friday. So um, and just in general, right? We always stream every Thursday, every Friday. Over on twitch.tv slash Game Informer. Go over there. We'll have some fun. We'll talk about, I don't know, like cottage cheese. I don't know what tack is on these days. Like cottage cheese, cottage maybe. Cheese. It's just something like some sort of gross like thing that he usually talks about. Um, let's see. Notable, notable YouTube videos. Uh, Alex's two-point campus video should either be up right now or up soon. And like we said earlier, we have a little dev video uh, with the folks at Massive Monster for... Uh, uh the cult of the lamb so that's some good stuff we did a review discussion earlier in the week about lego star wars kim and i did an ngt it's been a busy week but it's been a very good week uh so be sure to check all that out on youtube.com slash game informer social plugs this is where you can follow us on twitter um i don't know if any of y'all are active on any other social media that you want to talk about but i know uh to survive in this industry we must have a twitter so you can follow me at studnick 76 van aiken at it's van aiken K Star Kim Wallace at K Star uh, 1785. Reiner is at Andrew underscore Reiner. And then finally, Wes LeBlanc is at LeBlanc Wes. So pretty simple. Go, go tweet us, say hi, that kind of stuff. Um, go look at my hot takes about food. <laughs> Wes, this is actually why I brought you here. Um, oh, this was all a ruse. I talked to the people at Devolver. I wanted to really like build this story up that you're just on yeah. the podcast today. No, this is, we need to talk about some of your takes. They're getting out of control here. The, this most recent one is is a lot to handle. Probably my best. Probably my best. Yeah, I agree. Do, do you sit up at night? Your wife's all tucked in. Your dog's cuddled <laughs> up to her, and you're like, 
like red eye, just like thinking about hot takes at, <laughs> at, at night. What are you, what are you doing? I don't know. I guess maybe I just have like a weird upbringing, but like, <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> the, the take, uh, the take is that chocolate milk is best enjoyed with ice, which best doesn't enjoyed. sound, it's not a hot take to me, but every time I've mentioned it, people are like, Whoa, what you like your milk to be cold. That's what the heck. That's no, so no. strange. <laughs> Water it down, you become, I would think. A, I love that you became a Muppet there, but B, not, that's why you put milk in the fridge already because it's ice cold it's there. It's not cold enough. It's not cold enough. And I chug milk chocolate shake? milk. I chug. <laughs> that's fair, but milkshakes are, they make me feel worse than chocolate milk does. Here's True, the thing. I'll give you that. When I drink that. milk, I drink it fast because I don't know. I don't like to just have, I'm not just watching a movie with popcorn and a glass of milk. It's just, <laughs> it's like I'm eating cookies and I'm going to go chug a glass of milk real quick. You know, yeah. I add some Nesquik to it, throw okay. in a couple cubes on the top. That way when the, the liquid passes through the cubes into my mouth, it's ice cold. There's no watering down. It's, it's, I'm that 16 ounces is gone and no more than six Brain seconds. Freeze, though. <laughs> <laughs> Brain freeze. I, I guess I have a strong brain. Doesn't happen. You do have a strong brain. We can uh, we can <laughs> confirm that. So, man, uh, listeners, if you have that. any if you have any hot food takes, let us know. I'd actually be curious to hear what y'all think because uh, yeah. this man this man is unhinged now, and he's we've given him too much power. <laughs> um, but I'm just uh, getting started. Yeah, <laughs> not even six months here. Yeah, let's go, uh, baby. Let's go. Uh, <laughs> other podcasts you can listen to in the GI Podcast Network. Uh, video gameography. That is the uh, kind of video game history one that Marcus and uh, John Carson do together. That is very good. They're doing Bioshock now. I don't think they've announced what's next, but I'm sure you'll want to be there for it because it's going to be great. Uh, all things Nintendo. The illustrious Brian Shea breaking down all the Nintendo news you need. Um, he gave me a little tease on a certain guest he's going to have in a few weeks. And holy freaking moly. Uh, you're, y'all are going to want to tune in for that one. So he's killing it over there. And then finally, from panel to podcast, that is Andrew Reiner's comic book podcast, where you can check out every Tuesday. He goes over the biggest comic book news, whether that's in the actual books, um, whatever Fortnite crossover is now here, the movies, uh, the whole thing. So um, we got a lot of great stuff for uh, GI Podcasts, if uh, that is your favorite way to consume entertainment. So. Moving on, listener emails. You know it. You absolutely love it. You ask me every week, when are we doing it? When are we doing it? You know. Uh, this is the part of the show you write in with your questions, comments, concerns, dreams, nightmares. Um, and we talk about them on the show. And you can do that by either writing into podcast at GameInformer.com or joining Discord and uh, going over to the Game Informer section and writing your questions in there. I usually ask for questions either Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, but you can access that if you go over and subscribe on Twitch when anyone is streaming, right? Or even not too. Some people have subscribed off air and we appreciate them too. But um, that should connect you to our Discord. We do have a guide on the site if you have any questions or if something's not working, reach out to one of either Alex or I um, and we'll get you taken care of. But we had a lot of good stuff this week. Uh, we're only going to do two because I think we're running long. But I'm going to burp again. What is the matter with me? I held it in. You digested too many video games. I told you. Correct. Yeah. Wesky, slide me over a glass of that iced chocolate (laughs) uh, that you got going on there. I got you. I got you. Um, uh, First one comes from Chock Full Of over on Discord, which uh, I don't know if I've read one from Chock Full Of. So welcome. Thanks for the question. Um, Does anyone actually like cooking in games such as Monster Hunter, Breath of the Wild, Final Fantasy XV? Seems like just a a time sink and an extra step you need to do before every fight. And it's not actually a rare resource that you have to decide when to consume. So interesting. We're we're getting another little hot take here because I know some people love cooking in games. I love cooking in games. Yeah. So let's hear it, Kim. Why why do you like cooking in games? Because I like food. Um, (laughs) Final Fantasy 15 had some very yummy things on the menu, by the way. Mm. Um, I'm a big ramen fan and they, you know, they tasted ramen to make sure they got that, you know, accurate. I want a job like that. What can we do at Game Informer that's like Kim, you know? Have all this ramen. Tell us which is the best. We'll send you to Japan. It'd be great. But no, um, I haven't found a lot of games don't make cooking necessarily essential. It is like a side thing that is a buff. And you find it a lot in RPGs. Um, But I like picking up ingredients. I like 
15 different dishes I can make. I think one of the most satisfying games I played recently actually is the recent uh, Rune Factory 5. Because, I mean, like, it really got in there. Like, you could buy a stove, a mixer, you know, a steamer, and it, like, af affected all these different cool dishes that you could make. I mean, I can make star-shaped hash browns, yo, with my with my frying pan. Like, Let's just go. opening up new recipes is fun to me, and then seeing also the benefits of, like, what that can do. I mean, in Rune Factory in particular, they actually make the cooking very powerful, and it can really, like extend how much time you can spend in a dungeon and almost like restore your entire health and rp um i don't know if i want i i kind of like it being this like side thing that's up to you if you want to really invest in and have certain mm -hmm. perks when you go into battle because i know like monster hunter everyone's like don't forget to eat your food but who wants to miss that cute little cutscene with the cats anyways like right. come on now mm -hmm. um so I'm a fan of cooking in it. And get, the funny thing about this is and my fiance can attest this. I can't cook for, you know. For beans. For beans. Thank yeah. you. I didn't <laughs> want you to have to bleep. Um, yeah, I was trying to like get into cooking over the pandemic. And like I had one good dish and everything else is like failed dish. You what know? was it? Just what you, what'd you up. cook? What was good? What was the good uh, one? I cooked a very good orange chicken. Ooh, um, okay, that sounds mm, yummy. And yeah, then also yeah. a general uh, Sal's chicken was really good. But okay. everything after that was just like, mm, mm, not. And so <laughs> I gave up. I gave up. I'm actually trying to make it back into the kitchen to make chocolate scones, and I'll let you guys know Ooh, how yeah, that we need goes. An update on that I was one. like, maybe I just need to bake and not try to like make dinner. I don't know, but it was it was good. But in games, like I said, maybe it's like that. Oh, I couldn't cook these in real life, but here I'm I'm a famous chef in this game. I'm I'm making <laughs> yeah. you know, I give my my food to my friends in Rune Factory and they're like, This is delicious. So living through living through my characters in video games, I guess. Love but, it. Yeah. Yeah. That's my take on cooking in games. Okay. I like that. Wes, how about you? Um, for me, it depends almost exclusively on the presentation of the food. Right. Um yeah. Like for obviously Final Fantasy fifteen is like a standout. There's so many dishes; they all look really, really tasty. Monster Hunter has good looking food. Kingdom Hearts three, shout yep. out to uh, cooking with Remy. Good food yep. in uh, Paris. Okay. Um, and and I also think I kind of like him said like if it's a side thing, I think that's totally fine because I don't really want that to have to be an essential thing before every quest. Um, but I feel like if you're gonna have it make it like kind of worth my time i think of mm -hmm. horizon forbidden west i think kind of dropped the ball with cooking like not drop the ball it's there i just i learned about it and i have not used it once since and i don't feel like i need to um and i don't think the food looks nearly as tasty as other games mm -hmm. um like give me a give me a little animation give me a little cutscene right when i'm getting yeah. a fresh dish like mm -hmm. um an, an image isn't going to do it for me so yeah i guess um speaking to how much i love food it really just depends on how good that dang food on screen looks right that's fair yeah i'm i i guess ambivalent about it right i i'm not a survival game guy so i guess i don't seek it out but like it's you can't tell me uh chalk uh chalk full of you can't tell me right you're you're dusting off pokemon sword and shield and you're making a little curry for those cute little little buggers right and they're all happy they're eating yeah. it right like you can't tell me that's not fun a little bit right i want to feed pikachu like curry you know that would be cool um but and then no. i want curry so that's I the only drawback curry. of yeah. good food and games yeah. then you want it and you're like well mm -hmm. i'm not going to be able to get this ramen in final fantasy 15 because i'm not in japan i mean let's right. face it you never will have ramen like it is in Japan. I had Can you ramen. tell I miss Japan? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I had. I went when I went to Vegas with my fiance. We went to David Chang's restaurant, Momofuku, and had ramen mm -hmm. there. And I literally, my head was about to explode. It was so good. So I can only oh, imagine uh, what it would be like in Japan. I want to oh, go so God, bad, so but good. yeah. Um, but yeah, no, it's a good question. Also, shout out to Breath of the Wild. You know, for the sounds of the cooking and stuff like that. The co good cooking mini games with like the the pots like and and the the sizzling and stuff like that that's that's always great yeah. and also um overcooked I have a, is um, fantastic so cooking mama cooking mama mm. shout out yeah what's what are you gonna say oh yeah i forgot about i have a um lo-fi playlist of video game songs i used to like write to yeah and breath of the wild's cooking is so good that somebody made a song out of 
the little jingle that plays and the noise oh, really? of the pots and pans. And you brought it up and I was like, that's a good song. That's amazing. So you should cool. send that to me on Slack. I would, I would definitely listen to that. So, yeah. All righty. Next one from the legend, Bobby Buell. Hey, yo. Oh, and I just exit out of it. <laughs> well, it wasn't that's very the, kind, that's that the time, kind of Bob. respect you're getting, yeah. Bob. Yeah, Bob. Yeah. Send better questions, Bob. I'm just kidding. I love you, Bob. <laughs> um, Ken, too much game. Heard a game in your mind, Bob asks. Uh, I know everyone talks about games like GTA V, the Horizon series, and Elden Ring and say, there's too much game here. It, like, never ends. It's a great, like, it's a great thing. Uh, and obviously being, and obviously getting the bang for your buck is great. But for me, the kind of commitment level to just, uh, just to beat a game can be very overwhelming. I've just beaten Elden Ring, level 140, 98 hours, and I feel like, uh, the last 10 hours, if not more, were me going, okay, I'm ready to wrap this up already. Call it decision fatigue or call it too much of a good thing, but I was uh, exhausted by the end, and I think this is going to hurt my overall opinion of the game. So long story short, do you think that a game that's arguably too long or has too much content can hurt it? Thanks, Bobby Buell. Great I'll question, Bob. RPGs, no. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so, I, absolutely. I think, yeah, a hundred percent. I think I've talked about this on the show before, but like, uh, there's a reason why I'm never going to play Persona Five. It is I've heard greatest RPG of all time. It will cure disease. It'll you know wipe out famine. I'm not going to play it because I know shut it up. is. It is <laughs> shut up, Kim. <laughs> it is a hundred and twenty hour commitment minimally. It is Bro, worth your time. Hundred twenty hours worth. You got to take your time. Yeah. Exactly. That's so much. It tells you that. That's so Here's much. Here's the thing, oh, though, with Persona 5. You can put that game down, and that battle system isn't like something you have to relearn to go back. Right. It's just like it's easy to come back to um, and pick up and play. Just like I used to, what I used to do. So, this is like old school Kim, because I used to play a lot of different. I can't stay on one thing. Um, so, I always wanted to have like two or three RPGs going at once. And RPG? I would write... Yeah, I would write in the notes. Um, like, I'd make a little note inside um, the game case, and I'd be like, this is where you stopped. In case I had to, like... And what you had to do in case... Games are better now with, like, giving you directions, but back yeah. in those days, uh, they were... Because I would just go by what hooked me, and I think what the thing with this question is... I can't tell if... Um, you know, a lot of people are like, there's too much, like, side stuff to do now in games. And I'm like, I'm fine because that's optional. Um, I don't like when I feel like some of the side quests in Horizon I felt like should have been attached into the main quest because mm -hmm. they do give a lot of context. I mean, mm -hmm. it's fine. They can be done. But I feel like you're missing out if you don't do them. I even feel like the witcher three for example your those side quests are so good and it's mm -hmm. so like i wanted to do them all i wanted to do everything on the map but there's definitely stuff that like i i'm using horizon because it's a recent example but it's like i don't want to do all those like hunter challenges or all that i don't have time for that um mm -hmm. but some people like go towards what you want i mean play as much as you want and if you feel like you're that fatigue i know there's the, like this we have to speed through everything now because you don't want to get spoiled on something or whatever. But nope. I'm like, if you're feeling that way, maybe take a break for a few days. I mean, I've had to do this with myself and it's the only time it gets really difficult for me is when I'm in the middle of a review for an RPG. Can't put it down, but most people don't play RPGs just like straight all yeah. the time, all day. Mm -hmm. um, but I find that if you take a break often, you'll get there. I just, but there is a thing of excess and there is a thing of like the content, if the content isn't good and it's bringing the game down, then absolutely a game can be, can overstay its welcome and be too long. And, you know, just if it doesn't respect your time, I think is another thing by like mm -hmm. making you backtrack a lot or doing like really repetitive qu quests where you're like, you could have trimmed the fat here, like yeah, big time. And I, I think this question just gets more interesting. Um, lately because games are coming out at the the pace that they are well now it's slowing down a little bit but just because and they're so big um it's and huge. you feel like yeah. you have to play everything and you do like i said it's just and but everybody wants as much as possible i think a sign of a great game is when you don't want it to end when you're like 
there's all this content. I want to keep going. Mm -hmm. But I could understand how something like Elden Ring to try to go through that really fast could be if it's just like a little daunting on people, a little like much. And I agree with Bob because this is I I beat Mm -hmm. Elden Ring. Uh, this weekend, very excited. My fiance was excited for me. The whole we, we threw a party. She's like I have um, you back now. Yeah, for I mean, but for real, <laughs> yeah. that one was hard for me because like I know how I get with games and from games in particular. Mm-hmm. And if I drop it, I drop it, right? So it's like mm-hmm. I can't stop playing this because I'm gonna lose that muscle memory. I did. It did help me that uh, my, that this is a whole nother side tangent. But I did bleed build and I got through that real quick towards the end. Hey, um, yeah. yeah, shout out to shout out to my bleeders out there. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I, I, um, yeah, so it was, I feel that, that fatigue. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and that was hard to, to drop with, with Elden ring. And, um, but I love like a great curated experience, like tunic. I just beat tunic last night. It was like two in the morning. It was bad. I'm not sleeping well. Um, that was part, it was 12 hours. It, it was, laden with discovery and surprise and happiness and scary stuff towards the end not scary but like mm-hmm. interesting like uh stuff that I wasn't experiencing like and I thought that was perfect you know um and I think a great uh we haven't hit the the big buzzword yet but I think uh Ubisoft is a huge criminal of this um with just the 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 idea of more is better more towers equals better like you know more the the fetch quests and that kind of stuff it's or like, been yeah. so long since i've done everything in one oh, of their yeah. games Even, i used to like back with like a the early assassin's creed almost everything except i didn't like catching all those feathers whatever some people did that but like it's i can't remember the last time i was like i'm gonna hit everything and and do like because it's just too much yeah it is and it's not i think even in i think my favorite ubisoft open world game as of late is uh immortals phoenix rising weirdly enough but that's Mm -hmm. another thing too where i didn't feel like they overwhelmed the map a ton Mm -hmm. with that and you know, I didn't feel like I also I was missing out when I just didn't do the side stuff. But Wes, I know you had a, a, a take in here that you wanted to to give. Yeah, um, you brought up Assassin's Creed and that didn't come to mind, but that is absolutely a good answer. Mm-hmm. Valhalla is just too much game. I remember there was I, I guided that game. Um, I did the walkthrough for it and it took me probably 100 hours of like playing that game and it just kept going and I remember at it's one point still going. I, it still is. I know. And I'm not even, I haven't even, I liked that game a lot, but mm-hmm. I just, I'm so done with it that I'm not even excited to play this cool Norse stuff. I remember climbing to the top and doing a synchronization point and then seeing the horizon fill up with, I'm not even kidding, like 50 different colored lights or points or whatever. And I was like, you gotta be freaking kidding me. Like we can't, <laughs> this is not, this is not healthy. Like what is going on in this game? There's too much. Right. Um, but then on the flip side, uh, a game that recently was just too much, in my opinion. Um, it takes two, um, which a lot of people loved, and I really like that game. Yeah, but you know, I felt tilted our heads. Yeah, during I, that. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, yeah. I, no, um, this is good. I played that with my wife, and and she's newer to games, so um, it took us a little longer because she's you know learning the mechanics and whatnot. She had a great time. I had a great time, but at the end, we both came out of it like exhausted. I think because it's throwing every two minutes you're doing like a new gameplay mechanic the game is a feat of mechanics in that regard there's always something new they're doing and it's it's incredible but i think you get to a point where it's just like man this is so much like every five minutes i'm having to do something new that i didn't do before and i kind of just want to you know give me a mechanic and let me stick with it for a bit and that game just kept like go till the very last minute you were doing things you had not done before which is a feat in its own regard but it's also it can be exhausting so i think it's really just about you know finding a balance mm-hmm. between you know the gameplay and then how long you're going to actually have to play the the game right the joke is right there do you want to take it or should i you got it it takes two more like it takes too damn long ah huh? ah huh? yeah all right Shout out we'll, Joseph call, Harris. we'll kind of <laughs> Yeah, kind of clap for that. <laughs> I'm opening at the brewery uh, on Thursday. Let me uh, uh, be sure to swing by. Um, yeah, and I think this is this is why I have trouble with something like anime um, or oh. TV and stuff. Oh. Like, <laughs> I'm not coming oh. for anime, Kim. I promise. Oh. Anime is great. Anime is great. I'm not saying anime is bad. 
why I struggle with it sometimes is I feel like if a creator has something meaningful to say and, and they can say it in a concise way, I'm more in on that versus filler. I can't stand filler. It, it feels like I'm like, what's the There are point? always filler episodes. Yes, you are correct. Right. And that's why like something like um, Scarlet Nexus last year. Great example. I love Scarlet. I thought that was like a nine yeah. out of 10 until yeah. the last like 10 hours. I was like, this won't end i know where this is going i can see the conclusion like the powers are fun but i'm not growing a ton anymore like be done and be okay with that you don't need to fill and that's easy for us to say right we are in we're in a we're in a a, a job right where it's like we have to go to the next thing we appreciate more concise stuff and i and i get it for the person out there who can afford maybe a game a month maybe right you want to play that for 400 hours because that's what you're playing. So it's like, I don't want to be dismissive to those people at all. That's not where we're coming from on this, but it's like, I don't know. I like it when people have a vision of something and can present it in a way that doesn't waste my time. So. I think is the content meaningful and is right. it like engaging and pulling you in to do it? If it's not, and you know, it's more just, ah, you know, we're just going to make you go here now. It's really not going to add anything to the story. You might just yeah. fight a few people. Like, that stuff is annoying, and I agree. Like, that's when... And let me tell you, I playing as many RPGs <laughs> as I do, I know a lot about repetition. But, <laughs> like, right. and that's always one of my big complaints, is it's like, stuff, you know, when you make people backtrack to the same areas and all that, like it just in the quest design is all the same and kind of plays then it's repetitive. But I think like games like The Witcher, for instance, have shown us with like side content, like you can make it real engaging and that compels people toward it because they mm -hmm. like I always felt rewarded. I was like, this is a new cool story that I'm finding or a new character or it's connecting to something bigger that uh, that'll be another rewarding quest down the line that I always just felt like, yeah, I want to do this. Did I do everything? No, because I think at some point, like you have to really, I don't want to ever force myself to do something just to do it. My days of like, I'm going to, my completionist days were over. That was Little Kim. That was Lil right. Kim. Lil Kim. <laughs> yeah. Lil Kim with her strategy <laughs> guide, uh, sitting yeah. there with her strategy guides, being like, "I have to get everything. I have to dodge all these lightning bolts. Please, Final Fantasy X, give me all these <laughs> ultimate weapons." And yeah. I can't do that anymore. But right. I was having fun back then doing it, though. You yeah. know, that's, yeah. I think you just—it's got to be up to the. But yeah, I wish um, sometimes with like stuff that's main quest, especially like devs really looked at what it was adding to the experience and not just being like, eh, we don't really box like, quote. Let, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's not just have this dungeon go on forever. And one of my favorite series, uh, <laughs> trails of cold steel, the trail series is very like, it just always has like long dungeon after long dungeon to end it. And the dungeons are cool and everything, but you always know you're in for it's like, does it have to be like this every time? Does it really have to be like this? Every damn time. Yeah. But cool yeah. boss battles reward it. So that's there what I'm go. saying. Got yeah. me some reward. Pros and cons. Yeah. And that's something that I think Elden Ring did really well. Even if you got a sword, maybe that wasn't fit for your build. It still felt like you were growing and, and that kind of stuff. So. I was I I did have to grind an Elden Ring though and I didn't love that, but this one of those. So Oh, ladies and gentlemen. What a show. Just a show. like how we like our games and entertainment. We hope we you found this engaging. Uh having no filler, right? You know, we hope you come back. We hope you like it. Um be sure to like, share, and subscribe. I know I always say that, but it really does. It it helps the engine go right the youtube engine the podcast mm -hmm. engine all of it so any any subs you can give us on youtube or um apple podcasts or any star ratings you can give us on spotify and mobile like it helps a ton so we appreciate you um special guest is coming next week that i am very excited about um and maybe a, a, a our first developer on oh. uh in the alex and alex era which i'm very excited about so uh you're not gonna want to miss next week so thank you Thank you guys, uh, Kim and Wes, for joining us. Um, thank you for listening. Be good to one another, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.